What's going on, people? Welcome back to the Magpie Channel TV. Welcome to another day going by without saying a monkey. <laughs> just honestly, less than one week of the transfer window remains, and we're still no further forward. So, take a panic, eh? No, uh, I'll do my best not to, right? Because I've said all along, patience, and it's 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 very very thin now, my patience. Very thin. So I've tried not to be pragmatic. I've tried not to be paranoid, worried, concerned. But I'm very much getting there. But again, as I've said all summer long, I will reserve judgment until that transfer window slams shut. So next Friday night, 11 pm, is it? That'll be it. Then, oh my dear, then we'll be going live and going ballistic. If it comes to that, but I pray it doesn't. I well and truly pray it does not, because I am still hopeful that we'll get the Mark Gahey deal done, or at least some centre back has to come in and potentially right winger. But as the days go by, as the outgoings get slimmer, if happening, you know, the chances dwindle away of Almiron leaving, and we're getting to trip yes future because we're getting to some key moments of Eddie Howe's press conference yesterday of what he said, poignant points by the gaffer, and I've seen some stuff on social media as well, and I want to touch on it, where there's a lot of worry about what's actually happening at Newcastle United, so what's going on behind the scenes, now everyone is already slating Mitchell, the new sporting director, because let's face it, he hasn't done that yet, but you've got to be honest and realise that he hasn't had long in the role, and that has definitely had a detriment on this window, normally with a poor Mitchell, normally with a sporting director, they'd be given 6 to 12 months minimum to get targets and all that, to get things ready. And now he's the one that's trying to do the deal with Palace and quite rightfully so, it's not looking good on him at the minute because it's three weeks in the making and we still haven't bastard signed him or moved away. But I will stick up for him and I will stick up for the club in the sense that they haven't had long to, to get things sorted, arranged, organised. And obviously when this all first came out, Eddie Howe did his interview in Germany. He was mentioning boundaries. We need to know what the boundaries are of the club and... Eddie Howe on transfers yesterday was said, I don't know, right? I'm not in the loop. I'm not in the loop anymore. I'm not getting daily updates anymore. Which is a big shift in what was happening previously under Stavely Gadusi and that way, uh, Ashworth, because Eddie Howe was very much a vocal point in that. He was front and centre, to be fair, of dealing, negotiating, picking targets, and now he's obviously more so the head coach. He's obviously still getting discussed on targets and still has a say in things, but that's Mitchell's job now. So Mitchell's in there, and people are questioning, you know, what's going on behind the scenes. Is the unrest? Is the tension? Probably, I probably a little bit, because you know Eddie Howe won't be happy. He was saying, oh yeah, oh, you know, he wanted signs in before Japan. That was a bloody month ago. You know what I mean? He wanted signs in before pre-season. We're about to play our second game of the season tomorrow against Bournemouth. And we still haven't signed anyone. A real note. Yes, Lloyd Kelly for me is a decent free. John Ruddy's 49 years old. Odysseus was done for PSR reasons. He's linked to go out on loan. Asula is the one for the future. Have I missed anyone out? I don't think so. Lewis Hall was already here, same permanently. So as it stands, it's been a stinking, awful window. Let's let's not let's not sugarcoat it. I will say how it is. You know what I mean? I will, as always, be brutally honest. However, I will say there's still six big days to go where it all could change. Trippier could leave, Almiron could leave, probably unlikely that latter one. And you know we could bring in. A record transfer fee for us and Mark Gahey, and we could also maybe get a right winger as well. So that's why I don't want to go mental yet, and I don't want to lose it. But I understand loads of you lot in the comments very frustrated and criticised, and it's right to criticise so far. But again, we've seen deals done very late. We've signed Anthony Gordon very late in that January window. Uh, you know, we've signed players late in the past. Deadline day is there for a reason. It's bloody chock hour, isn't it? It's chaos. Deadline day. Not normally for us, like, we don't do that much, but, you know, other clubs, we've seen it before in the past, so hopefully we'll see an entertaining end to the transfer window next week. So I'm not going to go bonk as just yet and lose the plot, but I will say it's a very pivotal week because, like I said, I've said all summer long, you know, we cannot go to the the next season with Murphy and Almiron. As much as I like Murphy and, and Almiron's okay... That those aren't right wingers that get you top four, and that's the goal apparently. Darren Eels and everyone, that's the goal. Top four, you know, win a cup. If everyone stays fit, but honestly, I just I can't add that. But we're not going to touch on that yet. 
because it's hypotheticals, right? We'll wait until the transfer window shuts and then we'll talk about it. But is it time to panic? A little bit, yeah, but not fully, right? Let's just give it give it a bit of time, give it a bit of breathing space and see how it progresses. But as it stands, Saturday morning, 11 a.m., Mark Gahey, our number one target this window, is set to captain Crystal Palace for their game against West Ham United here. So he's still playing. He came out and did a speech yesterday about how much of an honour it was to be Palace's captain and all that. So... Who knows? I mean, I've, I've backed it. We still haven't walked away. They haven't officially rejected that fifth bid. So, I think, I think I've think i been honest, I think it'll still get done. I think we're all waiting on Palace getting the replacement sorted. She has to play today. Um, but they're waiting on a replacement being sorted because Anderson's already went to Fulham. So, they've lost one of the main centre-backs. Are they going to lose the other one? We'll wait and see. But if they get a line up replacement, then yeah, I think they will. And, you know, it'll be interesting to see how gay he gets on the day because all the Palace fans last week were slating him for his performance in Super Sunday's uh, game against Brentford, where, you know, I didn't see the game, but apparently it was awful. His head wasn't in it. Palace fans were saying, oh, he clearly wants to move to Newcastle. So we'll see how he gets on today on his home turf against West Ham. But let's see what Eddie Howe said yesterday. On, uh, I told you what he said about transfers. Gay, he obviously is never going to talk about individual names like that. But on Kieran Trippier, right? Let's move on to Trippier because that was the big news this week in the 21s game. His captaincy being taken away from him. Him saying that he wants to leave. Anyhow, on Trippier's future, he said it's business as usual. Trips has trained really well this week. I'm surprised at a lot of the stories that have came out. He continues to be really valued by all of us. My wish is that he stays, but I can never answer with absolute certainty. Other journalists asked him, you know, has he asked to be wanting to leave? Has he said he wants to stay? And he said, no, they haven't had any conversations to add. But again, Eddie Howe's not going to come out and say this, is he really? So, yeah, you, you've got to take it with a pinch of salt. But what you did see was him not guaranteeing that Kieran Trippier will be here in a week's time when the transfer window closes. I guess you can't do that with any player, to be honest with you. Like, if Arsenal put in a £150 million bid for Isaac tomorrow... There'd be questions at the club, but uh, that's not going to happen. Let's pretty hope not. But, but yeah, so that's what Eddie Howe was saying on trip. Yeah, you know, you, you can see Eddie Howe is getting tetchy, frustrated by the end of this press conference at the repeated journalists asking him about trip. Yeah, about what's been said. Does he want to leave? All of that. And he said, I don't know how many times I can word this. I don't know how I can say it differently. But yeah, I want him to stay. He doesn't want to. He hasn't said to me he wants to go, which again he's not going to reveal because then how's that going to look for Trippier if he doesn't get a move? We obviously heard the other day that Trippier wants to leave. Everton was linked now. It's at Atlanta in Italy, Galatasaray in Turkey, Saudi Arabia are still interested. We'll wait and see where Tripp ends up, but I, I, I'll be surprised again, like I've said before, if he does stay. But if he does, it'll be alright. Good squad depth. He's still, a, he's still a quality player. He should be remembered you know, really well for any Newcastle fans. He's been amazing for us, apart from that stinking couple of months he had last season. But just to, again on what he said on transfers for the specific quote was no news on transfers. I'm a step removed from it. So it's always difficult for me to give you definitive answers, but I'm aware there's still work going on behind the scenes. So Eddie Howe is reiterating the fact there that they are trying behind closed doors to get deals done before next week's deadline. Shaw's suspension, let's talk about that. Eddie Howe did reveal that they did appeal Fabian Shaw's uh, suspension, but it was denied. Rejected. So he begins his three-match suspension tomorrow against Bournemouth, which is an absolute piss take. For it to get rejected after going to VAR, after now being appealed, them everyone looking at it behind closed doors and not just having a bit of common sense, but sticking with that decision is a shambles. Absolute shambles. Can't be asked to talk about that anymore, but yeah. Um, that was crap. On the captaincy then. This dominated the press conference. Jamal Lascelles has been promoted a club captain, so he's going to overs oversee the captains. Captain of the captains, Jamal Lascelles. He's an incredible leader behind the scenes. Trippier and Dan Byrne and their leadership group continue their rules. Bruno has stepped up to be team captain. I've never, need, I've never known so many captains in my life. More captains than the fucking Titanic here. More captains than the Royal Caribbean. What's going on? Captains upon captains? Captain America? Captain Newcastle? Freddie Howe wants 11 of them because he wants 11 leaders on the pitch regardless who wears the armbands. Eddie Howe really tried to play down the the, the thing of, you know, taking Trippier's armband away from him, which he was very frustrated and upset about Kieran Trippier according to reports. Uh, but Eddie Howe said, it's not it's not that big of a deal who wears the armband, to be honest with you, because 11 of them should have 11 armbands next next game tomorrow against Bournemouth. Every one of them. Premier League can we get that sorted. Captains everywhere. We'll make our own Adidas 
Alrighty then, on to the Bournemouth game tomorrow then. Super Sunday, 2pm, Vitality Stadium. I won't be there because I'll be at Stack St James's Park hosting in the fan zone. It's going to be an unbelievable atmosphere. I can't wait for it. We've seen how popular and rammed Stack has been so far since it opened. Great place, class vibes. I'll be there, there'll be live music. Keith Downey from Sky Sports will be there as well maybe. We'll be talking about the game, talking about transfers. And we'll be getting the place buzzing, getting the atmosphere going ahead of Newcastle's first away game of the season. It'll be live on the big screens, of course, at Stack. So if you're going, get down early because it's going to be absolutely trying. So <laughs> get down there early. I think I'll be there for about half ten. But uh, looking forward to that. Looking forward to the game. Listen, it's a, a really, really difficult place to go for Newcastle, especially in the Eddie Howe. He just doesn't like to win there, does he? Eddie needs to forget about the cherries, focus on the magpies because he, he will never win there. Since he's took a back there the last couple of times... Obviously, we haven't done well. Last year was a bit difficult because we had all the kids playing. We had all those European injuries and we had Trippier, yeah, speaking of him throughout this video, having to go at the travelling away fans for criticising the team, which was bang out of order, that, that bit that the kids said, to be fair. He went on to apologise. But that obviously drew all the headlines. Uh, Trippier yeah, confronting the fans. We lost that one 2 nil. Awful, ugly game. Surely it's not going to be that tomorrow. Got a decent, fit enough team. Before that, we drew 1-1 with Armron under Eddie Howe and then... Um, I were one for one to be fair a couple of years ago. Valentino Lazaro, which was actually Steve Bruce against Eddie Howe. Steve Bruce beat Eddie Howe 4 1. COVID times, lockdown, didn't count. But I uh, listen, Bournemouth, it is, you know, the close to the pitch, tiny, tiny, hostile ground. And they've got a good manager now. Decent playing some decent stuff. They've obviously sold Slanky, but replaced him with their record signing a 40 million Brazilian. Not Joe Linton, thankfully. Evan Ilsen. And he's bound to start tomorrow. He's bound to score. Of course he is. A dream debut. You can see it now on Sky Sports. I'm interested to see how he does, to be fair. The Porto striker. Listen, losing Slanky for, 40, for 65, but investing 40 in this Brazilian. It's a big move for them. Big money spent there. So I'm interested to see how Bournemouth do. I think they'll have a good enough season now, investing that Slanky money. They'll, they'll survive relegation, would have thought, and be floating around mid-table. And it, like I said, it's a tough place to go. Bank all day Sunday. Fair play to all the Newcastle fans that are travelling down because it's a nightmare of a travel with all the trains and everything being off. I know a few of my pals have went down on the bus this morning. The bus, my God. They might be lucky if they make half time. Getting the bus down to the south coast. Jesus, fair play travelling to an army. But if we want to get top four, top six, these are the games where you have to pick up results. I don't think a draw would be the end of the world, especially early in the season. We won my first game. But when we go to Bournemouth... Ah, the Lloyd Kelly Derby. The Callum Wilson, not playing either. Eddie Howe, Jason Tindall. A lot of emotion in the game for these lot. A lot of emotion. You take that out, get a result. But it's something Newcastle haven't found easy in recent history is winning home and away games back-to-back -back at the start of a Premier League campaign. The last time we begun a season with those back-to-back -back home and away wins was 1995-1996 uh, season. 3 0 home to Coventry, kicked off the campaign, then 3 1 away to Bolton Wanderers. In scoring has also been an issue in Newcastle's first away league game of the season. Haven't found the net in 10 of the last 12 open fixtures away from St. James Park, Premier League, and uh, down in the Championship as well. So it isn't going to be easy, man. I'm telling you, I haven't got the best of feelings among this game. Just because of recent memories of Bournemouth, to be honest, but. My head says 2-2 two, two, or 1-1. One, one. My head is going with a draw. And like I said before, it wouldn't be the worst result. But my heart says 2-1 Newcastle. Let me know your score predictions in the comments below. I'll bring you loads of class footage from the stack tomorrow with the atmosphere bouncing. A match reaction as well afterwards. How are you feeling then, people? Less than a week to go at the transfer window. Who, if anyone, will we sign? Let us know in the comments, lads and lasses. Cheers for watching. Subscribe to the Back by Channel TV and enjoy yourself.